Hi everybody, I'm Bill Sanders and this is Watch Art Sci, the art and science of Watts Collection. Uh, today I'm going to talk about a company called Louis Monet. Uh, Louis Monet is named after a famous watchmaker who was credited with inventing the uh, chronograph. So it's well known for that, but the connection uh, between <laughs> the watchmaker and the company is is, is, is well gapped, I'll put it that way. Uh, anyway, in, in taking a look at their watches, you look at the watches, you look at the movements, and you really find out a lot about what the company is all about. Now, this one is called Metropolis Magic Blue, caliber LM45, 4 hertz, automatic, 48 hours of, of the of power reserve. Now, when we take a look at the movement, what we find out is that it was, they talk about it as being unique to the brand and our proprietary movement. And it was developed, though, and manufactured by a company called Concepto. Uh, Concepto is in uh, La Chute of Fonds, I believe, and they make movements for whomever. Now, if you look at the movement in the lower right-hand corner, this is a Concepto Caliber 2220, 4 hertz, 48-hour power reserve. It's the same as the LM45, but you can see the difference is that there's some, some added parts to it and a very fancy uh, rotor to the LM45 compared to the 2220, but you can see the 2220 as essentially the base for this movement, and this is true with a lot of the movements by Louis Monet. Now, this next one is part of their, what they call cosmic art. There are two branches uh, that they have, uh, two categories of watches, the cosmic art, and then the other one's called mechanical wonders, and mechanical wonders tend to have uh, a more com uh, more complex features, more complications to them. Now, this one is the LM48 is hand wound. I like that, and three hertz. I like that too. Seventy two hours. Now, this is the Hope probe, and one of the things that you find in the uh, Louis Monet uh, watches is a lot of things that were done by the Russians and the Americans. Uh, more so the Russians and their cosmonauts and so forth. Uh, and they make that part of the theme of the watch. Now, when we look at the uh, the movement, and this is a good looking movement on the thing, on the LM48, but it's manufactured by a company called Tech Iboshes. And when I want to take a look at Tech Iboshes, what I found was that they, they're basically, they make the entire movements, they put it all together and everything else. Uh, a couple of examples they had at their factory was uh, one by a company called Manufacturer Royale and the other one is uh, Louis Monet. And they partner with another um, company uh, in caliber development called Impulsion. I'm not quite sure what Impulsion does, but and if there they have a lot of pictures of all of the all of the machinery and everything they have and i don't think uh any of that belongs to louis monet uh but rather it's all part of tech iboshes and they go they have a you know they simply like to go there we want this movement and they'll make it for them and they make some very uh complex ones too now uh going along there's this one is a newer one called um space revolution and it's an it's an interesting one it's uh what they call a manufactured caliber uh flying satellite double tour beyond three hertz um 21,600 vph manual wound now this one sells for 360,000 swiss francs and they only made eight of them but when you're talking about a double tour beyond and we take a look at um the the company that uh, Tech Iboshes they include Double Tourbillons as part of their making them. So, I what I would imagine is that they is Louis Monet goes to uh, Tech Iboshes and so this is what we want. This is what we're going to do, and they give them the basics for it, 
and then they put it together or somebody puts it together for them. Now this one, another one, this one's called um, Louis Monet uh, Mem uh, <laughs> Memoir, Memories Superlight. Now this is a, this was a finalist in the uh, 2020 Grand Prix. And uh, one thing I take a look, they've been a finalist in the Grand Prix a lot, but they never won. And I'll talk about that in a second. Anyway, this one is called the Caliber LM79 Chronograph. This is, and here's a company that's named after the, the guy who first developed the uh, chronograph. So this is an important watch for them. Uh, and it's 26,000 uh, Swiss francs, uh, which is for a luxury watch. And this is how sort of their, all of their stuff is, is pretty expensive. And I think that, uh, but you know, here you get, you know, fairly complicated <laughs> a chronograph and you get to see all the parts. You can see right at the top, right below 12 o'clock, you can see the uh, column wheel that they have part of a chronograph, give you an idea of it. Now, I mentioned that they've, uh, this one, like I said, this is a finalist in the uh, Grand Prix for uh, 2020, which is from now, from last year's. Uh, but they've had, this is, uh, they've had a lot of different ones. In 2016, their uh, Red Lips uh, chronograph was also a finalist. The Jules Verne Instrument 3 in 2012 was a finalist in the sports watch category. Uh, and the ladies, they've also had some uh, finalists in the ladies group. This was called Star Dance from 2013. And uh, they had another one in 2011 called Astralis, which was in the uh, men's complications. And I think, you know, what you have with this, when we looked at um, Shumei watches, which was basically a jewelry company that was that was making a few watches. They also had a number of finalists, but they never made it to the finals. My hunch is, and this is only a hunch, is that they really are not exactly watchmakers, but they have something called uh, etablissons. In other words, they, establish, they assemble them, all right, uh, from the the core that's made by somebody else. And the core of a watch is going to be the movement. Uh, you have some important dials and so on and so forth. And again, the case and the dial don't know where they're made. They could be made in by a case making company or a, a dial company, and all just sort of the whole design and everything is put together by uh, Louis Monet, uh, the company called Louis Monet. Now, one of the other things about it, why it's sort of one that I'm not sure about them and what exactly what they are, is that I went and I looked for their headquarters. Now, if, if you look at headquarters for other relatively small watch companies, uh, if uh, there's F.P. Jorn's in the uh, upper left there. This, was, this is right in downtown Geneva. Uh, there's Urban Jurgensen's. They have their own uh, workshop and ateliers, if you will. Uh, bottom left is H. Moser, and they have a look like a more like a factory. And again, they you know a couple thousand washes a year. Now another one is in uh, Glashütte, German company uh, Moritz Grossmann. They got a this great big wonderful looking building they have there for making watches. And so you have like, even if they're s small ones, uh, and all of these are relatively small watchmakers, uh, they have some kind of watchmaking facility. Now, what F.P. Jorn did is even more interesting. They, there was a building in a, in a town that uh, is in the canton of Geneva called uh, Meyren, and they have a joint building with Vasseron Constantin. Vesseron uh, has her dials made there, and F.P. Jorn has their watch cases made there. Uh, so, I mean, you have, a, a, you have a place where 
in the case of F.P. Jordan, they control everything. I mean, you get an F.P. Jordan watch, and you can believe that the, you know, everything from the, uh, naturally from the movement all the way down to the, uh, to the case are, and the dial are uh, by companies that are controlled are, and are owned by F.P. Jordan. So even small companies say, well, a small company, you know, they've got to outsource everything. It's simply not not the case because they they have, um, and I think that's the thing with uh, Louis Monet, and then they make these you know, <laughs> really expensive watches that way. So anyway, um, so that's sort of my view of Louis Monet. They're very much of a niche kind of, of watchmaking company been around for a while and they're always they're in there slugging plugging away they're sending in their watches to the grand prix but unfortunately they haven't won yet <laughs> but they've had some you know they, they they've had some finalists so it's sort of an interesting watch company i'd really like to know what you think because this is a very different kind of watch company and uh this is an opportunity to describe to subscribe yeah to subscribe if you'd like until next time, this is Bill Sanders for Watch Art Sci, the art and science of watch collection.